Ah, is it working now? Yes, yeah. now it is working. <laughs> okay, sorry. Sorry, everyone. Um, you haven't missed that much. Um, I'm here, Miriam and Sara. We are going to do this workshop and we are just talking about the contents. So we'll start with a quick introduction. Then we'll talk a bit more about text training and also tagging because this is quite important for a lot of you. And then we will talk about how to deal with layout in Transcribus and how you also can uh, train your own baselines models and what, yeah, what to know there. And then uh, we will also talk about the field and table models feature, which is still in the beta version of Transcribus, but you can already try it there and use it there. Um, and then we also quickly want to talk about Transcribus sites and um, you can't really see it here now, but we will have a questions and hands-on session in the end as well. So let's see if this works now. Yes, okay. Just a very quick introduction because as I said, I think you all are quite advanced users of Transcribus anyway. Um, just what is Transcribus in general, we try it to give you an AI powered ally to work with um, this very time consuming and laborious tasks that you all will probably know when you're working with historical documents and digital historical documents as well. Um, and yeah, so we have this, we always have this slide as an introduction, what Transcubus can do. And today, what we are talking about mostly is just the training of the different AI models. So text training, fields and tables and baseline models, um, and also the tagging as well. So tagging of the content or the, the structure of your documents. And yeah, just very quickly in the beginning as well. So just because we are always talking about AI and machine learning and so on. So, um, just um yeah to quickly talk about it we have we what we want to say is that machine learning um and the training that you can use in transcribus um that is based on machine learning enables the machines the computers to learn from either labeled or unlabeled data and then identifies pattern in this data and makes predictions um on this data with at least uh, the least human intervention that is possible. And yeah, the AI models that we're always talking about are then the result basically, or they are algorithms created during the training process. And what they are is basically the acquired, they are the output of the training and this represents the acquired knowledge of the model or of the training process. And so we we already come to the one of the most important slides, I would say, <laughs> in this workshop or in general, when you're working with Transcribus, um, because we're always talking about ground truth or ground, ground truth material or data. And so we want to quickly show what this means and what we mean by that. Um, so the ground truth data consists or again, of labeled data for the training that may, um, enables then the model to identify these patterns and make predictions for the labels on new data. So you could say that the ground truth data is, or the material is all the pages that have been transcribed manually. And then um, this ground truth consists of the training and the validation set. And the training set for the training process is the a set of examples that is used uh, to adjust the parameters of the model. So basic, basically it's the data on which the, the knowledge in the neural network, so during the training process is built. And then you also need a validation set. So you need a set of examples um, to, to yeah, assess the performance of a model. And this is done during the training uh, process. So yeah, the, the validation set is the, uh, that's a set of pages where the model tests its accuracy. 
And yeah, you can't, I don't know if this is, we can do this any better. Maybe, no, I don't think it really helps because here we can't really see all the, the whole slide. Um, yeah, anyway, we have uh, just some information here what we would recommend a good validation set consists of. So we would say at least 10% of the training data. And it's very important if you're building a bigger model, which should work with more hands or more script types and so on, that all of these hands and types are, or all of these examples uh, basically are in the validation set as well, because only then the training can make a, a good uh, assessment of the performance, basically. And then next, um, we are going, yeah, we're going to talk about the training of the models. Um, so we have uh, four different model features or training features available already. And um, <laughs> yeah, you can, what you probably all know is that you can train a text recognition model. So you would use that to recognize the text. And then you can also train a baselines model um, to recognize the lines in your documents. Thank you, Flo. <laughs> that was what I was looking for. Um, so now we can all see the slides better. Um, and then there's two newer features, two newer training features that, as, you, as I already said, you can um, test in the beta version already to train a model for field or table recognition. And this is used to recognize text regions. So you can train models to recognize text, uh, individual lines and text regions or fields and tables. Um, then we will start with the training of text models or text recognition models. And here we also have some recommendations to begin with. So before the training of a model, as I just said, you need the ground truth material. So you need about 25 or 75 pages. So between this number to um, uh, of already transcribed material to start training a model. So we would recommend to have at least this amount of pages. You can start earlier, but it doesn't really, um, yeah, probably it will not be very yeah, well, good. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's just see what we are hearing here. I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So you can already start with fewer pages, and it, this also depends on your document type. So if you're working with print or printed material. Um, then you can start with fewer pages and you will probably not need as much um, as much training data. But for handwritten material, we would recommend to start with about this amount of pages. And then um, to, yeah, to start training the model, you have two options. You can either just go ahead, start completely from scratch and train and uh, transcribe all the pages that you want to use in the training completely manually. And then, you know, you have the ground truth um, ready and set to go. Or you can apply a model, a public model um, that has been trained on a similar script already. And if it's, yeah, if, it, if you get suitable results, this might help to, um, to increase the training data in less time. And then if you have applied the model, you can just correct uh, the transcription manually as well. So for the first option, we just have um, the, the basic information here as well. We'll just quickly go through it. Yeah, you select the pages that you want to include in the ground truth set. Then we would recommend to run the layout recognition separately. And then you have to, of course, check if this is already good for your documents or if you need to adjust it. And then in the first option, you just transcribe all the text from scratch. So um, 
put in all the text and you can, if you can't read some words or they are, yeah, illegible for some reason, you can tag them with the tag unclear or gap. We'll come to that in a minute. And um, what is also quite uh, good to know maybe is that if you have any lines that are left blank, so if you don't put in any text, but you still have the baseline, that they aren't considered in the training. Um, and for abbreviations, we will also talk about this in more detail, but you have um, basically three options. You can just maintain the abbreviations as they are in the text. You can solve them, so write out the expansion, and you can also tag them with an abbreviation tag. Um, what you decide depends a bit on your material and what you want to do with the data then. So what you expect as your final output, but we will talk about abbreviations in a minute. And then we also always recommend to save all the pages that you want to use for training with the status ground truth so that you know, okay, these are done and we can use them for training. But it doesn't actually um, do anything. It's just for your own orientation or your own um, information. And then in the second option, when you um, when you are applying a model, or maybe you can also make use of a supermodel, so of the text Titan 1, for example, um, uh, you can apply it and then correct the automatic transcription. So the same thing, you select the pages that you want in the ground truth set, then you don't have to run the layout <clears throat> sorry, recognition separately. You can just run the text recognition. And then, of course, again, correct the automatic transcriptions and again, save all the pages in ground truth. And then when you are done with this ground truth data set, you can start with the text training. So you can, in the Transcribus interface, um, so in the web interface, we will be focusing on the web interface and only talk about the expert client if it's not, if it's a feature or something that is not in the web app at the moment. Um, so you go to the model section in the web app interface, then you click on train a new model and then select text recognition model. And yeah, you also have to select a collection with your ground truth transcriptions and can choose the pages then in the um, in the training configuration, you can select the pages for the training. So all the pages on which the model is then actually trained. And then you have to select the validation set or the, yeah, the pages. Um, and as we already, or I already mentioned, no. a good validation set should be about 10% of the okay. training set and contain all the different examples that you want to that you want to then use the model um, for recognition. And then there are some advanced options. <laughs> so you can also, uh, yeah, we have a, an overview of the advanced options here. And we'll just go through them now. So you can use a base model. Um, so you can use any public model that has been trained on similar material. If you want to try and increase your training data in that way, um, so the yeah, if you use a base model, then the training doesn't have to start from scratch completely, but it will also take into account what it has already learned during the training process of the base model. So this can help, but we also recommend, or we always recommend to test this. So maybe start a training with, with a base model and one without it, because it yeah, it is very hard to predict if it's really going to help much or not, because it always depends a lot on what the base model was really trained on. Um, and also maybe a disclaimer here, you can't use um, text uh, super models as base models. So the text Titan one, for example, you cannot use that. It's just too big. And also the German giant, and I think the, the Dutch, the Dutch are just the transformers and the German giant you definitely cannot use as well because it's also too big, but it is in the description of the model anyway, just um, as a heads up. Um, yes, then we have some other advanced options in the training configuration. So you can also adjust the number of epochs or training cycles. 
Um, of yeah, we we recommend for the first training, or if you are if you don't want to worry about this at all, to just leave the default number or the default amount of 100 training cycles and only adjust this if you maybe have read a bit more about this in the help center, for example, or you know already what epochs are. Um, basically, they are the, the maximum number of times that the model goes through the entire training set. And yeah, you can adjust the number for this, but we would recommend to leave it as it is only if you know that you would have to adjust them or the training doesn't work at all. This can be an option. Um, and then there's also the, the early stopping option. So the early stopping um, value is the minimum number of training cycles. And here the default value in the training configuration is 20. So if after 20 epochs, the CER of the validation set doesn't go down anymore, the training will be stopped. And uh, yeah, you can also use this um, or adjust this for your training if you feel like you need this option, but also here we would recommend to use the 20 value for now. And then we have some more advanced options that we will quickly go through because some of them we will also discuss a bit later. Um, you can um, select the option to reverse the text for right to left scripts. Um, so at the moment you have to do this if the text was written from right to left. So you have a right to left script, maybe an Arabic or Hebrew text. Um, and so in the image it's right to left or in the scan, but in the text editor it was transcribed left to right. Then you can select this option so that the, the output text will be um, shown from right to left. Um, then you can also use uh, um, select the option to use existing line polygons. Um, but also here, we only recommend this if you have adjusted the polygons manually in the Transcribus expert client. And we will also talk about this what, um, polygons a bit later. Then I already said um, that you can select the abbreviation tag or you can tag abbreviations in your text and you can also train them. So you can then in the advanced options of the training configuration, select this option to train the abbreviations with expansions and that that then trains the model so that it automatic, automatically tags the abbreviations and also adds the expansions that you put in as an attribute or as a property. We will talk about abbreviations in more detail. And then um, you also have the options, I, I also already mentioned this, to omit lines by tag by the tags unclear or gap. So if you, if you have tagged any words or phrases that you can't read or something like that, or you don't want them included in the training for some reason, then you can select this option and the lines will be omitted during the training but also here keep in mind the whole line will be omitted so not only the word but the whole baseline um so this is also something <laughs> that is good to know probably uh, yeah then we can have a look at some examples um so when the training is finished this is what it then looks like in the transcribus web app so you can check out the model's details you can check the character error rate um, you can see the learning curve. So here, for example, for this model, character error rate is 1.5. So it's quite a good model. And the learning curve also looks okay. <laughs> um, yeah, then here we have some, yeah, a small table with some predictions to, or yeah, some recommendations to keep in mind. Um, as I already mentioned in the beginning, if you have printed text, you can start the training with a lot less pages. So you can already achieve from 25 pages in the training set, you can already achieve a character error rate between 2 and 0.5%. So that is quite good and quite easy with printed material. And then, of course, it gets more complicated the more complicated your data is. So if you have so, um, handwriting with one single hand and the handwriting isn't that 
hard to read. You can, with about 50 plus pages, you can expect a character error rate between four and 2%. And then if you have several hands, but they are all seen during the training, so they are all in the training data and the validation data, probably with about 150 or more pages, you can get to a character error rate from six to 4%. And then, of course, if you have many hands um, in, in the training data, they are maybe from the same period and region, but they were not all seen during the training, then the character error rate will be a lot higher and you will have to put a lot more pages into the training data or prepare a lot more. To then recognize some hands or some document that were not seen in the training in any way or the notes are very scribbled and hard to read then you will of course get much worse results in the in the text output um, but you can yeah you can of course add more training data always to improve a model and if you can, for example, double the, the amount of training data, then you can already expect a 20 to 25 percent decrease of the error rate. So it, um, yeah, if you can manage that, then the, the model should be improved in quite a good way. And um, yeah, we have already heard about this, that existing models can also be used as base models, so as starting points to reduce the, the amount of new data that you have to put in. But as I said, always test this because it's not always as easy or as good as it sounds. Yeah, then we wanted to show you some examples of some public um, um, yeah, text recognition models that you can just so you get, can get a better idea maybe. So we have this uh, public Dutch model for handwritten data. Um, it was trained by the Utrecht archives. And you can see that here with a training set of 178 pages and a validation set of 20 pages, they already um, achieved a, a character error rate of 3.10%. So quite impressive. And also the the learning curve looks good. Um, so really not that many pages. I mean, of course, this was a um, model that is just for one hand. So it's just for this um, Margareta Turner um, who, who wrote letters, but still, so 178 pages is really not that much ground truth um, data to, to start with or to prepare. Um, and then we have a print model, which is also public, so it's an Irish an Irish Gaelic model. It can recognize, uh, yeah, Gaelic and Roman type, which I'm not going to pronounce because it will be wrong anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was trained by Gerard Farrell, and um, they put in 243 pages into the training set, and only three pages to the validation set, but still um, achieved quite a good result. And of course, these were printed documents, but it's very impressive because they have this Irish Gaelic print in there, but also um, another Roman type. So two different types of um, print scripts or fonts and still a very nice result. And yeah, so that's it for the part of uh, on the training of text recognition models. And then let's move on to tagging. Well, um, you can train two types of tags in uh, train, you can tag two types of um, yeah, tags in Transcribus, you can use structural tagging to mark up the structure in your documents. So you can see some examples here. You can, in the, in the, um, on the top of the page, uh, the heading was tagged, and then also a paragraph, the page number, and also some uh, marginalia tag was added. Um, and you can do this in the 
um, document editor in the layout section. So on the, directly on the page, uh, you can select the shapes and then right click and just add the structural tag. And um, in the configuration part of the document editor, if you go to layout, you can then manage your structure, the structured types or which are the tags for the structural um, structural tagging and um, also added. Um, you can add more, you can delete them, you can change the visibility of the tags that you want to use and so on. So this is quite straightforward here. Um, but we will also hear a bit more about the structural tagging in the fields and table or in the fields model part of this workshop. Um, and what we want to talk about now in a bit more detail is the textual tags. So you can use textual tags to mark up your transcription. Uh, you can add attributes. For example, here, um, the, the word Austria was tagged with the, the textual tag place. And then you could also put in a Wikidata ID, or you could add a country and place name attribute. And the, uh, the textual tagging um, is done in the text editor. So just select the words or the word and click on the relevant tag and then add a property if you want. And also, yeah, to manage the textual tags, you can you will also go to the configuration um, section and then can again edit these in the collection settings. So you can add tags, delete tags, again, modify the attributes and so on. Um, and we can now look at an example, see if this works here. and maybe also try it. So we can see here we have a letter, an example letter, the text is already recognized. And then I know that there is, um, let's see if we can increase this a little bit. Yeah, we have a section down here where there is, um, yeah, an abbreviation. So this would be William here. And then I can just select this. Um, oh yeah, this is good <laughs> to show it here now. You actually have to enable this tag setting here if you want to use the textual tags. So if I now select it, um, I, I'm showing the, the textual tags that I have selected here in the text settings here. You can then also um, add more if you want to use them regularly or delete these. So for me, this is fine. I can just use the abbreviation tag. And now I can write the abbreviation in the expansion. And then we cannot see this again now, um, but we should have the, we should have the abbreviation tag. I don't know if we can see it now. No. <laughs> okay, let's see. I will just do this again here, even though this is not an abbreviation, but just that we see what it looks like. Here now we have the abbreviation tag, and that's as easy as it is, basically. Then um, let's continue. Okay, yeah. So I wanted to show how to act at how to add abbreviations and also the expansions because now I want to talk a little bit more about how to deal with abbreviations in Transcribus or in your training data. So it really depends on what you will then do with the output text or what you want to do. Um, but you can you have three options. You can just keep the abbreviated form in the transcription and yeah, just transcribe the abbreviations as they appear in the documents. And then this will also be what you get in the output text. Then you can transcribe the expanded form. So like we just did now, if, if there was WM, we could just tr transcribe William anyway. And in, yeah, the neural networks during the training process are quite often able to learn these, um, yeah, these expansions and also 
output them in the text as well, especially if they appear frequently. So if you have some tags that appear very often and you just want to the expansions to be recognized, then this would be the option to go. So you just write the expansion of this abbreviation in the transcript. But of course, it is very important here that you then consistently solve them in this way so that you not use other expansions. Um, yeah, yeah, because then that would just be confusing to the model. And then um, you can also have the third option that I already mentioned. You can tag and also train abbreviations including their expansions. So you can tag the abbreviation in the text at the corresponding expansions uh, expansion like I just did now in the expansion property. And then when you're training the model in the advanced um, settings of the configuration, select this option to train the abbreviation tag, including the expansions. And so just to summarize again, what you then get, you will, in the first option, you will receive the abbreviations as they are, or as you put them in the ground truth data in the text, so the abbreviated forms. For the second options, you will have the probably some abbreviations still. Wait. <laughs> ah, okay, that, that was not good. That was the wrong button. Um, let's see, here we go. Um, right. <laughs> so for the second options, you, option, you will receive some abbreviations and some of the expansions in the text that you trained the model to recognize. And then for the third option, now again, we'll have to select this. Yeah. Um, for the third option, you will get in the output text, you have basically Again, two options. You can then have only the abbreviations um, as you tag them. So when you export it, that is, you can select that in the export option. You can only use the abbreviations. You can get the abbreviations followed by their expansions, um, or you can also select to substitute them in the, in the export um, settings. So <laughs> you have yeah, you have a lot of options with abbreviations and it makes sense to really decide what you want to, or what you expect or what you want to have in the output data before you start the, the ground truth creation or production. Then let's continue. Yeah, here again, we just have the overview of, um, of the training configuration where to find the train abbreviations with expansion option in the advanced settings um, overview. And then I also wanted to show some models where we can see what this looks like. So we have this public model um, from the University of Toronto. <laughs> And they trained the model to solve the abbreviations in um, medieval manuscripts. They had 330 pages in their training set and 30 in their validation set. And now let's look at the example again. We can see it now. <laughs> Okay, seems like this is probably not working as expected. Let me check if I can show it like that. Mm -hmm. Currently not. Doesn't want to show me the page. Which is not ideal, but... <laughs> I don't really know what the issue is. Um, ah, here we go. Just reloading. Okay. Yeah, just reloading helps sometimes. So let's increase the the image here. And I don't know how good you are with medieval manuscripts. Um, I don't. I don't really know a lot about the abbreviations used there. But you can. Uh, yeah, you can just see, for example, here this. Um, 
homu and there is this abbreviation which was solved to hominum automatically so this is just a um the page recognized with the model um and also here for example sua which was then suam and the next the following word again so they have a very nice model for medieval uh, medieval manuscripts, which also solves uh, the abbreviations automatically. And then let's go to the next one. Um, then there is another model trained on medieval Latin documents from 1520. This is not public, unfortunately, so I cannot show more, but I, I will only show the one page. Um, and they chose to train the model um, to recognize the tag abbreviation, including the expansion property. And they had also not that many pages in the training set, so 177, and quite a big um, validation set for that. Um, you can see here that the character accuracy is quite high, but this can also be due to the tags uh, to the train tags not always being recognized correctly so um, the model works very well on their documents but uh, the character error rate doesn't show it um, as expected and now let's also look at this example hopefully yes here we can see it so this is also again the recognized tag and here we can see all the all the abbreviations. Probably I need to select this again. Yes, and then here we have the expansion automatically recognized. So I, I will not go through all the examples now, but um, this is what you can get if you train the the model with the abbreviation tag. And then, as I said, in the export, uh, you can, I mean, this is of course not 100% right, <laughs> but it's just an example of a model. Um, and in the export options, currently still only in the, in the expert client, you can then select if you want to keep the tags. So only the abbreviations, if you want to have the tags followed by the expansion, or if you want to substitute tags with the expansion so you have some options there as well and then um i'm more or less done with my first part <laughs> and with the talking just wanted to talk about training text recognition models for right to left scripts in transcribus so we um can show um, we can show this slide, which we are quite uh, proud of, or which is very good news. I think that we have already five public models for different right-to-left um, scripts in Transkivus that you can test. Um, although I have to say that there are now two versions of the Ottoman Turkish print model, so it's only really four different models. Um, but then there is another model for Yiddish, a Yiddish typeface, um, and also uh, the Dibuk model for different Yiddish handwriting um, documents. And then there's another mix of historic Hebrew scripts and languages. And um, so we can see that it definitely is possible to train text recognition models with um, for right to left scripts in Transcribus but you have to use some workarounds or you have to know how to do it basically. And so this is what I'm going to talk about right now. Um, we know that this is not uh, far from perfect yet. So the workflow that you have to follow at the moment, but um, yeah, this is what it looks like right now. So um, it would be good to run the layout recognition separately, or you can of course also um, mark up the layout manually yourself and so text regions and baselines that you have that and then as I already mentioned with this advanced option setting you should transcribe the text from left to right in the text editor so you have to get used to that that you cannot really um, transcribe the text in the correct orientation but you have to do it the other way around for the ground truth data and then 
in the training configuration, you have to uh, select the advanced in the advanced settings this option to reverse the text for right to left script so that the output text is then written in the right to left direction. Um, and yeah, we also have an example to show in a minute, maybe, but I just wanted to, to mention kind of an outlook. So as I said, we know that in, especially in the web app, working with right to left scripts is really not um, very good yet. And we are planning to have right to left support in the web app, hopefully soon. Um, unfortunately, I can't really give any better dates for that. And then that we would also, of course, want to adapt the training configuration for, uh, for right to left scripts as well, so that you don't have to work around with the training configuration. And just very quickly, um, let's take a look at the example page. If it loads the image, yeah. So just a very small example, but I think it's quite nice to see here that, um, yeah, you could see the, the numbers basically, and then you can see that it's written from right to left or recognized from right to left correctly um, and recognized with this very nice model. And so, yes, I think that's it from me now. Shall we answer some yeah, let's answer some questions yeah. for sure. I can read them and you can answer. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Miriam. First, I just one thing to tell that uh, um, when you mention uh, the um, Gaelic model, yes. uh, one user wrote that uh, oh. uh, another Gaelic model will be released soon. Oh. Nice. Uh, an Irish type model will be released soon. We train a Gaelic only model and also a bilingual Irish English model. Um, yeah, very so. nice. <laughs> and then the other question is from um, yeah, from Alexander. Mm -hmm. um, when running text recognition, can one provide an external dictionary, not the one from the trained language model? If yes, in which format uh, and how, when to upload mm -hmm. it? Uh, I can see a list of uh, dictionary files under custom dictionary in the expert, uh, but I don't know where they are. They all come from and how they should look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I am actually. I think I I saw that question also in the at the um, support mail <laughs> already, but I didn't have time to answer it yet. Um, I think yes, in the expert client this is possible, but um, in the web app it's definitely not possible. I think it or, was possible. Yeah, but it's not possible anymore, anymore at the moment. Yes, so probably um, we yeah. It would be um, quite hard to explain it now because I also need to actually ask my colleague Shosh how it is done um, in detail because I've never done it. But it is possible in the expert client. And yeah, if you if you uh, ask us, I, I know that there are some questions on that already in the support inbox. And if you ask us directly, we can, yeah, we can share the workflow with you yeah i did it for another project oh, yeah. okay. and uh, um, it's possible only for p2pala models uh, but by now only the developers can do it mm -hmm. so it was an option in the expert but it's not longer yeah. available um so you just can in add new names uh, or words uh, to mm -hmm. the model um yeah i think if there are more requests maybe we can Talk up it as a feature request uh, yes. and talk with the product management. Uh, exactly. They want, if there is the possibility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to add external dictionaries. So not only the, tra the language models that are uh, created during the training process, but if you have some dictionaries, some probably place names or something that the model usually doesn't recognize very well, then um, it yeah, can help to add such ex external dictionaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> uh, right. Um, yeah, now. Yes, let's move to layout recognition, which is not a funny topic, but it's important. <laughs> um, and so when probably you already know it, but uh, let's just uh, repeat it. Uh, when you click the recognize button, uh, in reality, there are two process, process, different processes in Transcribus. Uh, the first uh, is uh, the layout recognition. Uh, which is the identification of the baselines uh, and the text region regions. And the second one uh, is uh, the text recognition. So Transcribus needs first to know where the lines of text are in the, in the image, because for the computer, the image is just a series of pixels. Uh, and then uh, based on the baselines where the text is, uh, we, do the, we have the text recognition. So even if you process everything with just one uh, click, uh, uh, you just run your text recognition models. Uh, in reality, uh, there are two processes behind. Uh, and uh, yeah, the layout recognition is the markup of the document's image uh, layout. Uh, as I said, the images need to be <clears throat> divided uh, into text regions and baselines. Uh, and this is uh, a prerequisite for the recognition, but also even if you want to manually transcribe your document to create the ground truth and training model, you first need to run the layout recognition. Uh, there are three pillars of uh, the layout in Transcribus. The first uh, is uh, the baseline. The baseline are uh, a polyline running uh, along the bottom of the unwritten text line. So the blue line that uh, you see here with all the uh, points. This uh, is uh, the baseline. And even if you see this uh, shadow around uh, uh, the, the text, uh, the baseline is just uh, the blue line that runs uh, at the bottom of all the letters. And it's really important that uh, it stays there. Uh, it's there at the bottom of all the characters uh, and starts where the line starts and ends where the line ends. Then we have uh, text regions, uh, which are rectangular shapes uh, that encase the text. And on a page, uh, we can have uh, one text region uh, or multiple text regions. It really depends on the layout of the page. When uh, you run uh, the default layout recognition or the default text recognition, uh, um, the baselines are clustered into text region based on their coordinates. So often we expect we expect the first the text first the text regions are created and then uh, the baselines are recognized. Uh, no, with the default approach in Transcribus is the other way around. Uh, so first uh, the baselines are recognized, uh, and after that uh, they are based on the coordinates. They are clustered together into text regions, uh, and this is the bottom up approach. So first uh, the the, the baselines uh, and uh, at the top. Uh, after that, we have uh, the text regions. Uh, we will see that it's also possible to create first the text region and then the baselines, uh, but we need to use fields model for that. And then the other elements are the line polygons. Um, if you are um, users of Transcribus Expert, uh, you know very well them in the web app. Uh, uh, we recently introduced them. So uh, with the new editor, it's possible also to see the line polygons. But before one month ago, it it were only possible to it was only possible to see the baselines. So probably it, they could be new to you. And uh, the line polygons are polygons encasing all of the written text in the line. So the the baseline runs at the bottom of the line where the let character sits, sit, and uh, the the baseline, the polygon uh, comprise uh, the body of the letters uh, and the ascenders uh, and the descenders of each letter. So roughly they should comprise this text, uh, this region. It's important to know that uh, line polygons are computed uh, by an algorithm starting from the baseline. So first you have your baseline and then automatically there is an algorithm 
that uh, computes the baselines, the, the, the polygons, sorry. So uh, there is an option to modify, uh, to train uh, polygons. We will see it uh, later, but uh, usually they are just computed automatically by transcribus. Um, and it's important to note that the text training and the text recognition happen at the line level. So even if uh, we always say that the most important element to correct uh, is the baseline. So when we talk about transcribus, we always say that, yeah, you need to correct the baselines and then you can train, uh, uh, start the transcription and train your model. Uh, in the bank end, uh, when you train uh, the, the model, uh, um, what transcribus looks to during the training or during the recognition is this uh, light blue region called line polygons. Usually because the algorithm that computes uh, the line polygons is, uh, is good and works well for most of the handwritings, uh, it's, it's enough, but there are some cases where the text recognition uh, isn't good because of the line polygons. And we will look at, at some example later. Um, yeah, so in brief, these are the three pillars uh, of the layout, uh, baselines, uh, um, text regions, and polygons. And if, a, if each of these pillars uh, can affect the text recognition. So often we don't get uh, a good text recognition uh, because the, the model isn't uh, very good, but it can also be that uh, the model is good and we have uh, a good character rate, uh, but the problem uh, is uh, the layout recognition. And uh, there are uh, different problems. So um, now we are looking at the problem and then we will see how to solve them. Uh, the first problem is in regards to the baselines. We can have uh, inaccurate baselines. You see, when uh, I have this uh, newspaper here, I started uh, the text recognition uh, with uh, the um, print model, uh, and this was the result. Uh, so obviously the text recognition isn't good uh, because uh, the lines uh, aren't uh, accurate, aren't correct. Uh, so it could happen that uh, you have too few or too many baselines, uh, and these affect uh, your text recognition. The second problem could be inaccurate text regions. Uh, uh, you have few text regions uh, or too many text regions, uh, or because you don't have the right text region, this could affect uh, the reading order uh, of the lines. Uh, in this case, uh, you see there, there is uh, a page with two columns uh, of text uh, and the header at the top. Uh, for us as humans, it's quite uh, simple to understand how the lines are gathered, but because uh, the baselines are gathered by their coordinates uh, for transcribus. Uh, this uh, coordinate is very close to this and this uh, baseline. So it's just one big text region. Uh, and this would affect uh, the reading order because probably I will have this first line as the first line of my text, uh, then this one. Uh, and after that, I, the reading order will go to the first line of the second column. And then we could, we can have uh, inaccurate uh, polygons. Uh, so this is another problem. Uh, even if uh, the baselines uh, are correct, uh, the models uh, isn't able to transcribe the text properly. If you are in this case, so the baseline are correct, uh, but still uh, I have a good, good text recognition model, the baselines are perfect. Uh, still, I don't get a good transcription. Uh, the problem could be the polygon, the polygons. Yeah, and now let's look at the single problems and how we can uh, fix uh, them. Inaccurate baselines. Uh, so uh, let's look uh, at some uh, examples. And uh, yeah. where is the... Okay. Uh, here we have uh, uh, is the uh, back of a letter. Uh, with uh, some information uh, uh, and probably the address uh, um, written in vertical instead of in horizontal with the vertical orientation. And here you see this on the on the right, uh, you see the 
default recognition uh, with uh, text titan. Uh, the text titan should be able to read this text. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's English is not uh, so difficult. The problem is that uh, it doesn't recognize uh, the, the lines where the lines uh, are. The first uh, thing that you can do is uh, to use a different uh, baseline model. So it's possible to select a different baseline model. There are 12 public models trained on baseline. So they're not trained on text, but they're trained on the baseline. So, and you can also train your own baseline model and we will see later how to do it. Um, we recommend usually to try one of these three models, uh, universal lines, uh, mixed line orientation and horizontal line orientation. Um, it's really a try and error process. So our advice is to create a sample, uh, test uh, a cup, the models and the parameters uh, on the, sam the sample and then find the best uh, uh, solution for your documents. So, so there is not a, also, uh, also at ReadCop, we often need to do tests uh, to see which is the best uh, uh, baseline model uh, for uh, each type of document. So in this case, uh, I know that uh, horizontal line orientation, despite the names, uh, you can read the description, the horizontal line orientation is trained to recognize uh, um, horizontal and vertical letters, uh, horizontal and vertical text, while uh, the uh, mixed line orientation uh, is trained to recognize the uh, um, lines in all directions. So in this case, uh, we have just vertical letters, so I will go for the horizontal line orientation. And then you can open this uh, section, and uh, here we have a lot of uh, advanced parameters that we can use. Uh, the first, so I will show, you, I will explain you briefly all the parameters. This uh, is uh, if you want to generate uh, a new text region or if you want to keep the existing text region. Uh, in our case, we want to generate to, to generate new text regions. Uh, you use this option uh, if you are working with fields uh, or tables. Uh, the text region method. Uh, here you can decide uh, if you want to use just a, a general algorithm, algorithm to cluster text uh, baselines in text regions, or if you want to custom this uh, and uh, create uh, just one big text region, uh, few, medium, or many. And uh, if you know that uh, you have just one text region uh, on the page, uh, I would go for this uh, option here, for instance. Uh, and then we have uh, the uh, text baseline orientation. Uh, this helps uh, uh, transcribers to know how to cluster the baselines in text regions. In our case, the text orientation is mixed because we have vertical lines. Um, so I would try with these settings and then we can look at the others with another example. So I just uh, selected a different model, the horizontal line orientation. And uh, uh, I told to transcribers that uh, we have a mix, uh, we have mixed baselines. And now we can start the recognition and look at the results. Mm, by default, when you start a text recognition or a default layer recognition, you are using the mixed line orientation, right? Yeah. So, so the mix line, when you start the text recognition, uh, Transcribus uses the mix line orientation model uh, with uh, the default uh, parameters. So, yeah, let's see if we are lucky and we can see the result, but I already did it yesterday. So <laughs> trust me, this uh, is uh, no. Yeah, let's go there. Yes, this uh, is uh, the result uh, with the uh, parameters that I show you. And uh, when uh, I try to run uh, the uh, text titan uh, on uh, this model, uh, obviously it, the result is much better because now the lines uh, are properly recognized. 
Let's see at another example. In this case, let's look at the a newspaper. And we can, yeah, this is just to show you how the different parameters can give us different results. Yes, this is the result uh, with a newspaper when uh, I uh, started the print uh, uh, model, when I launched the print model. And uh, let's see, I want to, I go to a layout. I want to change the parameters to analyze this newspaper. I select a mixed line orientation and under advanced setting, uh, I want to keep the text region, the lines uh, are horizontal. And now we arrive to this setting, image scaling. Um, if, the if the image has good, uh, has poor quality, uh, or if you have many lines uh, on an image uh, and very thin lines, uh, like in the case of a newspaper, it helps uh, to upscale uh, the image. And then we have all these baseline options. The minimal baseline length uh, is uh, the length, uh, yeah, it's the length, indicates the length uh, of the baseline, so, and it's measured in pixels. So if it's set to medium, uh, uh, it means that uh, transcribers uh, will dis disregard all the baselines shorter than 25 pixels. Uh, so if you notice that uh, transcribers isn't uh, recognizing all uh, your baselines uh, because they are too short, uh, it would make sense uh, to set it uh, to low. Especially in tables, uh, it's really helpful because we have a very... Um, we have numbers or dates and the baselines are really short. It's, it helps to reduce it to the minimal baseline length. In our case with the newspaper, I'm quite, I'm sure that we have a long baseline. So I will set it to high to avoid too short baselines that can, can disrupt, um, can annoy me during the, the recognition. So let's set it to high. Then we go to the baseline accuracy threshold. And this indicates uh, the threshold uh, set by transcribus uh, to recognize uh, the baseline. Uh, we have seen uh, that uh, with uh, when it's set to low or medium, uh, you have usually better, you receive better results. Uh, so if you see, if you notice that transcribers isn't recognizing all the lines, uh, try to set it to low. Uh, based on my experience uh, with newspaper, it's usually, usually helpful to set it to medium or high. So it is just for newspapers. Use train separators. Uh, um, so this, uh, uh, this parameter and uh, the next one help to... to um, merge or distinguish baselines. So uh, if you notice that uh, two baselines that should be separate are merged together because they are quite close one to each other, try to uh, set the use strength separator to sometimes and to decrease the, the maximum distance for merging baselines. So in our case, because we have newspaper and the columns are really uh, close one to each other, I, I expect uh, that the baselines would tend to be merged together, even if they belong to different columns. Uh, so using these parameters, uh, you can uh, uh, prevent this to happen. Differently, if you have very uh, distant baselines that should be uh, merged together, you can set uh, the maximum distance for merging baseline to high. And now we can start uh, our recognition. It could take a, a bit uh, because uh, um, when you upscale uh, the image, it takes longer. But uh, I think I did it yesterday. Oh no, this is another one. No, let's wait. Let's wait for the result, and uh, yeah. um, it should give us all the lines uh, or most of the lines uh, in uh, the the right way. Yeah, we can 
go back to it uh, later. And so we have already seen how to hold the parameters. And uh, sometimes uh, it could be that uh, using the, a different uh, public uh, baseline model uh, or working with parameters isn't enough. Uh, and at this, when you have tried to work to work with all the parameters, but you don't get uh, a good result, uh, you need uh, to train uh, a baseline model, a custom baseline model. Um, I will just show you some examples. This uh, is uh, one. So here we have a uh, uh, vertical lines, uh, but mixed uh, with horizontal lines. Uh, and because they are very close one to each other, uh, even if you try with the horizontal or mixed public model, uh, um, it doesn't work. So in this case, uh, if you have uh, multiple uh, pages uh, with this layout, uh, I would recommend uh, to train uh, a baseline model uh, and train it to recognize uh, both um, orientations. Uh, another example, so let's go back to the collection, could be when we have uh, uh, see-through lines, uh, like uh, in this case, uh, or uh, uh, when the document is damaged, uh, you can train uh, a baseline model to recognize the lines uh, as you want, in this case, uh, just to recognize the main, uh, the main, the the lines on this page and not on the, the back, to, back of the page, and uh, also to merge them uh, as you want. So here you would need to have only one long baseline. Or another example could be if you have a marginalia in very, in, with different orientations. I uploaded that, uh, yes. This Persian manuscript, for instance. Uh, yeah, no public model we have, uh, even if you work with parameters, will be able to recognize uh, this properly. So you need to train uh, a baseline model for that. Uh, so if you have differently, very unusual layout, uh, you need to train uh, a baseline model. Uh, or another option could also be if you want to avoid a certain information. And what you have to do to train, uh, so let me see here. Here, for instance, uh, um, yeah, this, the layout here is quite simple, but uh, maybe you don't want to have uh, this uh, uh, note uh, here in red, uh, or you don't want to have uh, the name here recognized, uh, or uh, this uh, page number, so you can train uh, a baseline model uh, not to recognize them. So just draw the baselines that uh, you want to recognize, uh, and uh, the model will learn to avoid uh, all the others. And uh, to train a baseline model, what you have to do is to create uh, at least 50 pages of grant router. So let's take this example. You need uh, to look at the, you can start uh, the layout recognition and then you can correct it. So you cancel the lines that you are not interested in, and uh, you modify them and create your grant router. Um, you don't need to have the text, so the correct baselines are uh, enough. And after that, you can uh, train uh, your model. So it's it's very similar to the uh, text recognition models. You go there and you click on uh, train a new model. Uh, you select, uh, I probably have, uh, yeah, you select the training data, then the validation data, and we always recommend a fifth to assign ten percent of your training data to the validation data. Then there is the model setup for the advanced settings. Uh, we recommend to stick with the uh, default one. Uh, so if your um, baseline model has uh, are set to run for one hundred uh, training cycles, and usually it is enough. And then you can start uh, your uh, 
training. Then when you go to uh, the layout recognition, uh, you can uh, select uh, your own uh, baseline model. Uh, you will see all the public models uh, and also your trained uh, model. Uh, now let's go to um, inaccurate text region. So what to do when uh, the text region aren't recognized as we expect. Um, yeah, here we have text two example, the one with the two columns uh, and uh, the, other, the other one here where, when we have an index card uh, and uh, we have three text regions that doesn't make much sense. Um, I already told you about the bottom-up approach. So this is the default one. First, we have the baseline, so then they are clustered together into text regions. Um, you can modify this uh, approach uh, with the advanced parameters. Uh, so you can uh, select, the, you can um, sp say, specify if you want just to have uh, one big, big text region. Uh, or and also the text line, the text uh, baseline orientation, as I showed you before, and then there is the other approach, uh, the top-down approach. Uh, so first we have uh, our uh, text re first we recognize the text regions, and then we recognize the baseline inside the text regions, uh, um, and we have to do it with uh, fields models. So let's move to field models. They are available on beta. So you can go to beta.transcribus.au and access it with uh, your, uh, the same credential you use on Transcribus. And uh, the a goal of field model, it models is to extract uh, just the information that we want. Uh, so in this case, we have this card uh, here and uh, I don't want to transcribe uh, all the text uh, there because uh, I don't need uh, all the text that is on this document, uh, I just want to extract uh, the name, uh, the uh, place of birth, uh, and uh, the year of birth. Uh, and uh, because the information is a uh, structure, we can use a field model to extract uh, it. Um, yeah, and we can also assign structure tags uh, to these regions uh, and train uh, the assignment of te tags. Um, yeah, we have, you have already seen uh, the application of uh, fields model during the plenary session this morning. Uh, they are very helpful for tax regions, but also in the case of newspapers, uh, firms, uh, columns. Uh, and uh, to start with the field model, you first need to prepare at least 50 pages uh, of uh, training data. Preparing it uh, is very easy. So let's go there. Let's see if... Uh, it's recognized. <laughs> yeah, this is the result, which is good, better, I would say, probably not always perfect, uh, like here at the, the top, uh, there are too many lines, uh, but I mean, the main text uh, is, uh, is there. You yes, no, in this case, uh, the reading order wouldn't be correct. Uh, uh, because it's only one big text region. So for this, um, I would first uh, use a field model to recognize uh, the text regions uh, and then uh, apply a baseline model. Yeah. If you want to have, I mean, it's always depend on your project. If you are looking for names uh, and you just you want to process uh, um, thousand of newspaper and find uh, a specific name uh, or a place. Uh, um, I mean, it, it's not so important, the reading order, you just want to find the information. But if the reading order is relevant for you, you need to first use uh, a, a field model uh, or manually draw the text regions uh, in advance, which is also an option, but it's more time consuming. So you see here, it's, it, it jumps on all over the, the page. Yeah, so let's take an example. Um, yeah, here I have this index card. Um, process after the 
partition across the split the regions. I uh, wouldn't find that boy any hand. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you do it by hand, you know, I have to do that a lot when it doesn't get the problem, but you can just split the regions and then it'll, yeah. it'll fix the region of the problem. Yeah, but if you use that, you just uh, right. So what you need to do in the case of field models, just uh, draw the uh, the regions that you are interested in. Oh no, sorry. Mm. Yeah, let's go back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's not my laptop. Um, and then you can tag them uh, with uh, the text you want. You can, if you are not interested in, in some information, you can just avoid to create a text region around uh, them. Uh, and then you can assign uh, the tags uh, here, the ones that are relevant to you. And uh, under there, uh, there is the zoom bar. But yeah, here you can always uh, manage uh, your structural tax uh, as the textual tax. Uh, and I just want to show you an example. And then when you have uh, um, create the ground root for around uh, 50 pages, it really depends on the complexity of your documents and how many tags you want to use. But uh, let's say in this case, uh, um, yeah, I think uh, I trained this model on... 30 pages, so less than the recommended uh, amount of pages, and we just have five tags. Uh, still, the results are quite good. So this uh, is uh, a field model recognized uh, with uh, this, uh, this film. This is a page recognized with the field model, sorry. And yeah, it works uh, quite well. I mean, here, okay, it misses the, the day here. Probably increasing the ground route would give me better results uh, but uh yeah still i'm quite happy with uh with what he can do um and uh, i think there is also a poster this afternoon from adi from the british library and she compared the result of p2pala and field model p2pala was the old version old segmentation version uh tool we had uh, in the expert uh, so if you want to look at it uh, it's uh, there will there is a poster on uh, on that. Um, yeah, so this is uh, what you can do. And uh, yes, then you run the baseline. So let's see. Uh, so you train, uh, you, you create the ground route, then you train uh, the field recognition model. You apply the model as I show you. Then you need to run uh, the layout recognition to get uh, the baselines. Uh, and in this case, remember just to unflag the option, uh, uh, find new text regions, because you want to keep the existing text regions. Then you can uh, run uh, a text the text recognition. And uh, in the end, you can uh, correct or export it. And uh, in the um, expert, uh, there is the option uh, to uh, export the structural tag uh, as an Excel sheet uh, file. And I think we will soon introduce it, it also in the, uh, in the web app. So you see here, uh, the end result uh, is uh, this uh, spreadsheet uh, where you have uh, the file name and then uh, a column for each uh, uh, tag. During the export, so it assigned different uh, tags. So the problem is the tags or the region order. No, so for now it's not possible to to teach the model to 
um, have the right order. So the order. No, I don't understand. Yeah, it just is the structure check and then the, the text gets exported. Um, like you can see in the document here, you don't um, you don't really need the reading order to have the tab and the assignment text. That is the question. So in this case, uh, even if the reading order is different, uh, so let's go there. I'm not sure if I understood your um, your problem correctly. So it could be that uh, the reading order of the regions is different uh, from one page uh, to the other, but when you export it, um, the order will be say in the in the spreadsheet. Uh, the order of the columns will always be the same, at least for the document. Um, yeah, in is in the expert. I can show you later on my laptop because I don't have the expert on this one. Is <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are late. I think. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, here we have just uh, two example of uh, fields models. Uh, uh, this is one, uh, and this uh, is another one for newspapers. So, uh, unfortunately, we don't have uh, a public uh, field model for newspaper at the moment, uh, so you need to train uh, uh, your own one, uh, or uh, if there are people interested in newspaper, maybe, maybe you can uh, work together uh, and work together on one big uh, uh, newspaper model. Um, then the other problem could be inaccurate polygons. So you see here, um, in this case, uh, the lines, uh, the baselines uh, are uh, fine. So here, the line is good. It corresponds to the text, uh, but the transcription is not uh, good. So it's, it doesn't exist. Um, and if I go to look at the polygons, uh, you see that the problem here are the polygons because uh, because of the music, uh, like the transcribus algorithm uh, is confused. Uh, so it, it isn't recognizing the lines, uh, but it's trying to recognize the music uh, above the, the line of text. Uh, and the same problem, you can have the same problem where there are, there are uh, bigger uh, letters uh, or bigger characters. Uh, what you can do here, you can train a field model on polygons. So instead of training a field model on uh, text regions, you can train it on polygons. First, you need to create your run through to so manually adjust the field models, uh, no, the line polygons to comprise all the text in the line. And then under the, in the training of the field model, there is this option uh, where you can select uh, train online polygon. So instead of training on the text region, you can train it uh, on the line uh, polygons. Uh, and this uh, is the result. Uh, so you see at the top, uh, we have uh, the uh, default uh, line polygon, and on the bottom, the train one, uh, and also the recognition uh, is. Uh, much better with the correct uh, line polygon. I'm trying to speed up, <laughs> sorry. The last thing that I wanted to show you is uh, tables. So the, is, the principle is the same of field models, but here we have uh, columns uh, and rows. You can train uh, a model uh, to recognize uh, columns and uh, uh, rows, so to recognize a table. Uh, it's important to note uh, that uh, there, there are no general tables models, uh, so you ne really need to train uh, a custom model uh, for uh, the, the tables that you have uh, in uh, your collection or in your document. It's also possible to train uh, uh, a model to recognize uh, different types uh, of table, like two or three different types of tables, but uh, the technology won't allow to have uh, like a general model for uh, 
all the existing tables in historical documents. Uh, um, yeah, we have the rows and the columns, uh, and you already saw something similar this this morning. Yeah, and the grant equation uh, here, instead of creating the text regions, uh, you need to draw the table and then uh, split it uh, in uh, rows uh, and uh, columns. And uh, also this process is quite uh, easy to create the ground route. Uh, I mean, in uh, two hours, uh, you can uh, create all the ground route for a table model, or at least if you have simple tables. Um, with uh, easy tables, uh, like the one in the image here, 20 pages of ground route uh, are enough. If you have difficult tables, uh, or, uh, from the, mm, the columns and the rows uh, are not so um, regular, you can uh, uh, you need to increase uh, the pages of ground route. And if, have, if you have a mix of different tables, I would recommend to use between 50 and 100 pages of ground route. And then the training is similar to the to the field model, so it's always the same. And this is the result with a table model uh, with just 20 pages of ground route. And uh, yeah, here we have the process pages. So on it was correct on most of the, the pages uh, I trained it uh, on. Did you include the tagline? The... No, you can include it, uh, but uh, it was just uh, my decision not to include it uh, because uh, the header is always the same. Uh, um, so it's easier to add a row at the top uh, when I export Ether. Uh, if you recognize Ether, there are higher chances that uh, the text won't be correct uh, on all the pages. Yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, it's not possible to add a base model. What you can do is just combine the ground truth in one in one document. Uh, yeah. And yes, you can do it. Um, base model can be used for baselines models, uh, but only in the expert, uh, not in the web app. Uh, I think it's one of the features we are missing. Uh, so you can train uh, your baseline model on the top of uh, the mixed line orientation model, but for fields and tables, it's not possible. So what you can do is just, uh, you can just uh, create a bigger document with all your ground route uh, and train uh, the model on it. But for fields and tables model, it's really important that uh, the, uh, the ground route is consistent. So there should be some similarities uh, between in your ground route. Uh, you're welcome. So here is how to process uh, all the documents. Uh, and here you have just a summary on fields and tables. Computer accuracy, yeah. Mm. Uh, in Transcribus Expert, it's possible to compute uh, the accuracy for the text recognition and the, also for the baselines recognition. So you can compare your grant route uh, a corrected page uh, with the HTR page uh, or the, with the layout uh, analysis. Um, and the, here is the result. Uh, you can compare, for instance, uh, a model uh, with uh, uh, the accuracy of a model using uh, the language model or without the language model. Uh, and you can see if uh, the language model improves uh, the accuracy or not. Uh, 
And then you can also measure uh, the accuracy for one page or a set of pages. And it's also possible to compute the accuracy for uh, the baselines, not just for the text, but also if you're not sure which uh, uh, parameters uh, are the best one for your documents, you can create uh, the baseline ground route, uh, and then you can compute the accuracy on them. Uh, yeah, only in the expert, but uh, as uh, Kerstin told us this morning, uh, uh, these quality control tools uh, will also become available in, uh, uh, in the app soon. But for now, yes, it's only in the expert. Just, just so I understand what you just but so you, if you want to compute the accuracy, you take one of your ground truth pages that you already established mm -hmm. is completely correct. You run it through one model and you yes. run it through the other model. And then, and then uh, you can uh, select uh, uh, here, there is the option uh, to select uh, the reference text, uh, so your correct text, uh, and the hypothesis, so the HTR text. Uh, and you can click on compare text versions uh, and you end up with uh, this view. Or if you click to on uh, compare, you have the, uh, the measures. Uh, one thing to know is uh, it would be best to use uh, a granted page uh, that you haven't used uh, in the training. Uh, because uh, the mo so if you want a really uh, accurate evaluation, uh, it's better to create a test, a different test set, uh, because the validation, the training set and the validation set uh, have already been seen by the model during the training. Uh, so if you want really to be accurate, uh, it should be a new page, a completed new page uh, for the document. Yeah. Yeah, you can also use public models. Uh, if you are not sure about uh, which public model is better, like the text Titan uh, or the German model, you can compare it uh, in this place, but in this tool, but you always need uh, to have the ground route. Uh, so it takes a bit of time to create the ground route uh, first. Sorry. For the... No, no. Um, yeah, let's see that we just quickly finish this up because we actually wanted to have a hands-on and question session as well, but we also wanted to show as much as we can. So um, just very quick um, yeah, information, basically, because I'm not sure everybody is aware of this. We already heard um, in the chat today that there will be a new Irish Gaelic um, model coming soon, so um, that other users are publishing their models for everyone to use in Transfibus. And um, here we have just listed some, some reasons, basically, why other users would publish their models. I mean, it's quite straightforward. Either they just want to share it, they're proud of it, or they know some people who would like to work on it. Um, of course, you can also share models in Transcribus with um, specific collections as well, but why not publish it if you can? And um, you can also publish models without publishing the training data. So of course, a lot of people have to be um, careful with that and cannot just publish the training data, but that is also possible. And now just very quickly, um, if you want to publish a model um, for all Transcribus users, you can just contact us via our support email or via the contact form in the help center. Um, and there is also a section that says, I want to make my model public um, <clears throat> so that we know this is what you want to do. And there are some requirements that we have in place for now because, we, yeah, it's difficult to just publish every single very small model. So we have uh, requirements, but I just want to say if you have models that are uh, trained on text uh, that we cannot offer yet, or they are very, very specific models um, that you know some people can benefit from and they are smaller than the, the training set size of about 50,000 words or the CER is a bit higher still, we will still look at it and we might still publish it. So this is not set in stone. It's just a 
for us um, that something that we can work with. Um, and then, of course, it is necessary for us to publish it. We will publish it in Transcribus itself, but we will also publish it on our website if that's um, if that's yeah what you want. Then we would need a, a description of the model so that others can then understand what this model was trained on and what it can be used for. Also, always uh, some representative images um, cannot hurt because then people can see it. And um, of course, we also need to know who should be credited uh, to be the creator of the model. This can be one person, more persons, or we can also um, take a, the whole research project, for example. Um, and then uh, what I just said, the training data can also be kept private so that nobody can access it. Um, or you can also share it and then the training data will be public as well, which might be beneficial for other users too. Um, and yeah, then just as a, a, again, a bit of a heads up, we want to make the sharing or publishing of models a bit easier as well, because now you just have to contact us and then we have to do it for you. But um, we are planning to, to add this Transcribus Connect uh, to the web interface. And within this feature, it should also become more easy to publish models. And then there are no more requirements and such. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I think I will just go through it very quickly. The Transcribus Sites feature, I will probably not show it in the interface, but we have prepared some slides. Um, yeah, so you can see here that this is then what it looks like in the interface. You have this desk and models and section and then sites. Um, and you can just, yeah, you can just access sites there. Of course, it's important to mention here that you cannot uh, you cannot use transcribal sites within the individual subscription, but you have to start or you can start using it within the scholar subscription or higher, of course. Um, there are different kinds of tiers, how many pages for transcribal sites or for publication will be available, but um, this is all listed very well on our website. Um, and so, yeah, you have different features that you can use with Transcribus sites because, of course, you want to show what you worked on so hard in Transcribus, so all the text that you recognize, tagged, edited, and so on. Transcribus site is the perfect way to easily share and um, uh, let others access your material. You can uh, have, yeah, you have this uh, material then in the side-by-side -side view where you have the original or the scan and you have the recognized text, a text where you can also see tagged instances and so on. Um, and of course, most importantly, you have, um, a, yeah, some enhanced search uh, uh, search capabilities to use because that is probably what other people will want to do is search your um, your text or your transcripts. Um, and it is quite easy or we wanted to make it quite easy or as easy as possible to create such a site interface or such a publication interface. Um, so if you are in the site's section of the web app just click on create a new site there you can assign a project title for your site's um, interface you can ha have a custom url as well and you can add all the connected collections or all the collections that you want to show within the site's interface and then you basically always have three pages that you can edit so you have the home page or the home yeah side you have about and explore and you can always edit these pages and sim and see them simultaneously so once while you're editing it you can also already see what this then looks like in the site's interface um, and so this is what the home page will look like uh, you can see the title so here this is the marjorie fleming transcribal sites, um, you can add a brief description or it can also be longer and you can um, put in a background image that you want to share. Then you have this about section where you can give longer explanations about the project, the content, the team that has co collaborated on it and so on. Here you can have as many sections as you want basically. Um, and for every section, you can always edit the 
heading, the text, and you can also put in an image if you want. Um, and then for the explore part of the site's interface, you can um, you can then here you can configure what users or others can see in the search page. So if, if you want to show um, tags, if you want to enable that they can browse the tags or which tags are enabled in the first place, um, you can set filters that you want to show. Um, but this is then, of course, based on the metadata that you have ad added in the Transcribus document. So, of course, these filters need to come from somewhere, and these are um, you can edit these in the in the metadata um, options of the documents. Um, and of course, then there are also some other settings um, that you can you can edit. You can add more languages or also the possibility to edit translations um, because um, some others might help you with that. Um, there are some privacy settings. Of course, you can customize the theme of your site, so the, the logo, the color, and so on. And you can, of course, add other users um, with different roles, so with the role of owner or editor, um, just how you want it. And so I, I just ran through that a little bit. Uh, we will have some very, some more detailed um, explanations, workflows on the Transcribus sites in the help center. So we have um, we've also linked the help center here. We already have a sites overview and um, there will be some more um, information coming also in video. So hopefully that will clear things up. So do we have some questions here? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I can just repeat the question so that they can also hear it online. Please, I think. Question concerning um, field training. Um, we may experience um, uh, if in training materials there is only one page that has baselines, the training crashes. Is this correct or are we doing something wrong? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think it the, shouldn't happen. No, no it shouldn't happen. No, the baseline shouldn't be an issue no, for the field training. But if you have experienced that, uh, you can send us an email because it could be maybe the, the, a specific bug or yeah. a problem of that collection, that document. Uh, so it's not your fault. But might also be a problem with the images or something like that. So it would be good. To, for us to check this in more detail, probably. We understood that the field is just so rigid, so mm -hmm. the event and how they just um, by uh, mistake. Okay, yeah. It would be a bit too grand to do something, but we expected it to follow the model. Yeah, no, it shouldn't. Yeah, it shouldn't. So if you have field, if you want to train a field model and there are some baselines in there already, this shouldn't be a problem, typically. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, are there any other questions? Also, in the field of the model setting, we see a similar problem that the reading model is kind of restricted from top to bottom. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know the feature. The feature. <laughs> Um, it, it's it's there in the expert client and all of us in the team who are working on documents or working projects, we also have mentioned a lot of the time that we need this option also in the in the web app. So this will definitely come to the web app as well. Um, I'm not R and D uh, added it as a, a point, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure when it 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 will become possible. I mean, I think that name entity recognition and large language model are more accurate for uh, R and D. So for this year, yeah, at least for this year, uh, we can try to push it. Push it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was another question. Then. Yeah. Um. So so basically, this is up to you, um, if you publish it or not. Okay. I'm I'm not aware of any. 
And as far as I know, you can, of course, restrict the, um, the publication. There might be, pos if, or you might want it that only specific users can uh, access it or so, but if you want to make it publicly available, um, of course, that's not what you want to do. I think on every transcript site, uh, there is also a report uh, button. Uh, so if any user notice that uh, some not right content is there, they can report it to to us. Uh, to... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I would say so. Mm hmm um yeah mm -hmm. yeah of course there are different restrictions in the different countries yeah we can also um we can also make sure to ask um yeah some like our team that are dealing with legal um legal things to make sure but I don't think that we would offer the option if we were not allowed to do it in Austria. So, but I know that in Germany there is the problem. Yeah. Thanks anyway for this. Yes, please. Uh, I know one of the things I was interested to learn uh, is, is the API, uh, mm -hmm. the overview of works. And, yeah. And, yeah. And I wonder if that's going to be covered in, in a different session or. Um, we wanted to, we were thinking of including it to this workshop, but then we thought it would just be too much um, because, yeah, it is, it is a whole other thing, basically. Um, for this, for this workshops in this year, years to UC, we don't have anything, I think, especially on API, but we are planning to do a webinar on it. So a separate webinar just on API introduction, usage, questions. Um, if you send us an email, uh, maybe, or everyone, uh, if you want, if you are interested, you can just send us an email and we can make sure to send you the link, the registration link when we organize uh, yeah. such webinar. Yes. Some more questions from the chat or Yes, please. Is it possible to export a model outside the screen? For example, in a file, I have read the novel and so on. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for reminding me. Um, I just rushed through it. There is um the option to publish your ground truth data in as a Nodo community that we have specifically for the read co-op. I think it's um, hosted by Günther. So you can publish your ground truth there. Just um, ask for the for the access and then he will he will grant it. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure about um, <laughs> directly exporting models. No, it's not possible to export uh, all the model. You can just export uh, the ground truth uh, with with uh, uh, all the layouts information of the coordinates uh, and the text, uh, so the page XML, uh, which you can then import it uh, into another uh, uh, system uh, and train it. Uh, yeah, there are also some uh, um, projects uh, on about sharing model um, a ground truth. One is uh, HTR United. Uh, so it's uh, um, it's run on GitHub, I think. There is a website, uh, and you can contribute uh, to this uh, uh, data set of uh, ground truth. Um, you need to make sure that you have the right to uh, publish uh, the uh, the images uh, too. So uh, to yeah, this one. Right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any other question from the chat or? Yeah, no, I just wanted to. Oh, 
Uh, unfortunately, now we didn't have time to to do the hands-on session, but I hope that you still had some uh, good input and some questions answered. And I mean, we can, Sarah and I will still be around. So if there are any more specific questions, um, feel free to ask us. Um, yeah, and I put uh, uh, the short link and uh, the uh, QR code to the yeah, yes, great, solution. yeah. That you can download this um, the slides basically of this presentation as well and yeah of course the link to the website uh, sorry <laughs> and our email addresses are also there um, maybe hide this again maybe it works better that way um, is there any more questions now that we can answer or ah oh, yeah <laughs> and, yes yes um for sure so with the compare feature that we showed um there is the option to also compare samples um but yeah unfortunately it's still on, only in the expert client but it will come to the web app um, hopefully soon. And yeah, that's, this is a great, uh, great option to, to check also what kind of model you want to use on specific documents or specific types of documents, because then you get the CER um, for each individual page, not only the whole model. Um, I'm not sure if we can if we have it here. Um, and the compare. I don't know if you can see it here because unfortunately we don't have the the expert client um, uh, installed here. But let's see. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't have the the specific compare samples um, view. No. I think. But it is in the yeah. computing, I can computing show accuracy you. Uh, tool in the expert client. Yes. The whole or the whole page. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> for this I just. Input wanted to share one thing that they mentioned in the chat um, yeah tool to uh, to compare uh, OCR but, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah sorry no. I sent <laughs> this one um so katarina i think uh, she recommended this one to not just to to measure the accuracy the statistical accuracy but also to see which are the characters uh, that uh, create problems uh, uh, and uh, there is another one uh, called uh Bruce. No. HDR. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, it's on GitHub. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's this one. Um, yeah, there is another page, but uh, I mean, no. no the, the name is this, and uh, it's uh, um, with this tool uh, you can also um, 
calculate uh, the accuracy without considering uh, uh, the punctuation uh, or avoiding to in not including some characters uh, in the calculation because maybe you just want to look uh, at the text but the punctuation is not important for you in transcribus it is a measure it is considered in when the accuracy is uh, computed uh, and there is this other tool uh, that uh, um, enable to about it Right. Um, and there was one more question. Yeah. Um, so, okay. so this is the Sonodo community where you can also check what other um, data was shared there already, or was was that a question? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's linked in the in the um, slides anyway, so you should find it. Okay, so yeah, I think then probably we should end the session as not to again um, have too much time from the from the break. But thank you, thank you very much for joining us. <laughs>